So we are really in the home stretch here, week seven of Intro to Journalism. I've really enjoyed seeing the progress that you've made as the course has gone on, and I hope that the edits I've provided have been helpful. I know a couple of students I'm working with to do some extensive edits on some of the assignments that they wanted extra editing on, and I'm happy to do that. If there's some pieces that you've done that you'd like to maybe submit for consideration for publication, or you just want more feedback, just send me an email. I'll be happy to review those in more detail. This week, you are beginning to prepare and starting to work on your final project. You can find all the details in the Week 7 and Week 8 folder. But what it involves, too, is finding someone who is a journalist that you highly respect and that you feel it is someone who you really look up to and, and maybe would like to take a deeper look at as a journalist who's contributed um, to the, the body of work in journalism. So what, what this is called is your capstone pro, uh, assignment is a journalism impact report. I'm looking at a, <laughs> a description of the assignment as I read to you. So, um, What you're going to be doing is find a person who you find is very interesting and has done a lot in the field of journalism. Some examples from past projects are Barbara Walters, Walter Cronkite, Diane Sawyer, Peter Jennings, uh, William Randolph Hearst. Um, there are Others, you know, it could be someone local, it could be someone that you personally have followed. I know Todd Starnes from Fox News, is he's still a very active journalist, but he really contributed a lot. So it can be someone who's either working in the field now or who has been um, a journalist over the years. And you're going to be identifying the impact that they've had and supporting that claim with sources, three sources, and analyzing and synthesizing and evaluating the contributions they've made to the field. And this will be an interesting way for you to also look at how journalism has changed. Because if you pick someone who really came to fame in the 60s, like Walter Cronkite, it's quite different than those who are using social media and other um, platforms at this time in, in the world of journalism today. Um, I'd like you to go ahead and, and look at the video I posted on Peter Jennings. He's actually a person who was one of my favorite journalists. However, I have researched him quite a bit because I used him as an example in my doctoral dissertation. And Peter Jennings, interestingly enough, didn't graduate from high school. And actually, in interviews, he talks about really feeling ashamed of that fact because his father had a radio show and he was on the radio show and he became a journalist by learning in the field and moving up the ranks and became one of the biggest anchors that we had for many years before he sadly died of lung cancer. He'd been a smoker and he died from uh, lung cancer. He'd given up smoking and then when he covered 9-11 he went back to smoking sadly and he did die um, and, and so that was a sad end to a, to a wonderful life. But he did make a big impact. Um, Walter Cronkite, he began as a radio broadcaster during World War II. He was broadcasting information. He was uh, there in the war and getting information back and then went on to a great career. Many of these early journalists came to fame when television was a new platform. Talk about having a new platform now with social media and Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. This is when television was the new kid on the block. So that is a different perspective than those who maybe have risen to fame at this point in time. So I hope you'll give some deep thought to this. And I have to touch on the journalistic um, activity that we've seen in the last week. I don't have assignment an assignment really geared specifically to this for this class. I do have a couple of my other classes. But think about how some of the information about this uh, situation with the, the dormer in the last week um, how, how this actually impacted journalism. We first off had many false reports that went out. There was information that was given that was later corrected. This happens often when you're dealing with a crisis situation. We had journalists who um, were right there in the line of fire practically. Uh, just many different situations evolved that involved journalists and covering dangerous events like this. So. Just kind of reflect on that. If any of you would like to discuss any of that with me, feel free. Um, again, I really have enjoyed working with you in this class, and I'm willing to give more feedback to any of those who need it. There's a couple people I'm working on some of their projects right now. Please send me an email if, you, if you'd like some help in that way. And also, if you need any prayer, I'm here to pray for you. Pray that you have a blessed week, and that I hope to have you in class again soon. We do have one more week to go, but I'm, I, when we get to week seven, I start counting down. So 
So I'm starting to think about, about um, the future for us. So I hope I, I will see you again in one of my classes. And I'll be getting caught up on all the gradings in the next couple of days, too. I, I know that we had a lot of work due this week, and I'll get that done for you. God bless, and have a good week.